Hello, my name is Kern, and welcome to another stupid tech tutorial video, this time on water traversal, and water traversal techniques, and sequence breaks, and all that. As you can see, there is quite a lot to cover on this topic. It's a very big topic. But I'm not the first one to make a comprehensive water traversal tutorial video, so, uh, you know, why am I making this one? Well. Some other great videos exist, um, Super Scudges and Gamer Cals, to name a couple that have been really influential and helpful for me when I was first uh, learning this tech. They did an excellent job. However, some new tech has been discovered since the making of those videos, and also some new applications of old tech as well that made some things possible that we previously thought were impossible. So uh, we need a little bit of update in that regard. Uh, also, there's just some plain obscure tech that uh, I think you don't see in races Mostly because it's so obscure that people don't even know it's possible, but also partially because the situations under which they would become useful are ridiculous. So, in true Kern and stupid tech fashion, of course, I have to go over all the obscure things as well, and as well as cover everything that has already been covered before to make this video 100% comprehensive. You might be able to tell by the length of the video that this is going to take a while, right? It's going to take a while to go through all this, um, this tech. So uh, what you can do is you can scan through the video and I will move this moon pearl cursor around to whatever section of the video we happen to be on. So you can kind of like scan through on YouTube and find the section you're looking for. There will also be links down in the description of the video to timestamps of different texts. So if you're only interested in uh, one subject in particular, how do I sequence break the Zora ledge or the items I have or whatever, then you can just skip right there. Um, I do encourage you to watch the whole video though. Uh, partially because some tech builds up on um, previous stuff that we've talked about before, so a single section might not be able to cover it all on its own, which is why I didn't break this video up into smaller sections. So apologies for the large video, but um, it seems kind of necessary. But also because uh, even like stuff, basic stuff like swimming 101 and movement, there might be some stuff in there that even some old hands at, at old speedrunners um, might find surprising. So with that, Let's get into Swimming 101 and Movement. So let's start off with some swimming basics. So first of all, swimming, as we're going to be talking about here, only applies to deep water areas. It doesn't apply to shallow water except for in certain conditions uh, in which you can actually swim through shallow water using a glitch, but otherwise you can only really swim in this deep water signified by the dark blue in the overworld. Um, or if you're in Swamp Palace, it looks kind of like clear water. Um, there's also shallow water in Swamp Palace, um, which has a different kind of tile animation than this shallow water, um, but it works the same in that it also slows your movement. If you happen to not have the flippers, um, then when you hop into the water, you will be ejected back onto land. Uh, this is uh, interesting behavior, um, and it can cause us problems in some situations. Uh, it would be interesting if there was a way to exploit this behavior and have it eject us back onto land in some place that the game might not expect. But as of the making of this video, I'm not aware of any minor glitch application of the fact that the game will um, restore you back to your previous point and ends up only really being a liability if you're playing no major glitches because it can do things like soft lock your game. If you happen to be walking around in the Moon Pearl, uh, even if you do have the flippers, you will be ejected from deep water uh, whenever you enter it. Um, this ejection does work slightly differently um, when you're a bunny than it does when you are Link. And this is actually a property we can exploit in some situations, which we'll be going over as well. Uh, one thing to note here about being ejected from the water, if you happen to have zero HP for whatever reason, then the game will check your health and it will kill you. So the game does a health check whenever you dive into water and are ejected. My guess is because the game uses the same ejection function as uh, it uses when you fall into a pit in like a cave or a dungeon. Um, so the game doesn't want to kill you when you're over a pit, and so it waits to check your health until you're back on land. So there's probably just some part of the function that just says, check health whenever we return you to land. So this ordinarily doesn't affect you at all because you have to do some serious shenanigans in order to be walking around with zero hit points and still be alive. But if you are walking around in that state, then just know that being ejected from deep water will kill you. So if you either don't have the flippers or you do have the flippers, but you um, don't have the moon pearl and are walking around as a bunny. Um, this can be a liability, but mostly it ends up being a nice exploitable property um, of swimming. 
in very obscure circumstances. If you want to know more about that, check out my other stupid tech video on bunny glitches. Um, check out the zero HP section. Normal movement on the ground moves you a set number of pixels depending on a few conditions like the type of terrain you're walking across or if you're holding a sword charge or you have something over your head uh, and also the direction that you're moving in like a diagonal or if you're pressing left or right there's a different set number of pixels that it uses but in any case your movement is constant on the ground. However swimming doesn't work like this. Swimming is momentum based so from a dead standstill, you can see it takes me just a little bit to kind of get going and even to stop. You know, if I change direction, um, I can even move backwards a little bit. So it's kind of like ice physics and you need to cancel your momentum in order to change direction. So if I'm going north and then I want to go left, then it kind of takes a while for me to pick up leftward speed, although I still have my north speed. Um, so yeah, you can think of your current speed while swimming as a fraction of pixels per frame that you are moving. Uh, and it's it gets pretty precise like what that fraction actually is. However, in A Link to the Past, you cannot actually move fractions of pixels. So instead, subpixels are used. And this should be familiar with uh, familiar to you if you you if you um, know about pumping, uh, which is a ground-based uh, movement mechanic that uh, exploits some of this behavior. But um, basically, how that works is it's there's an alternating number of pixels that move in a specific pattern, such as um, two one two one or other patterns like one 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 zero. So there are these alternating um, pixel patterns that allow you to essentially move an average of a fraction of pixels over a certain number of, of frames. So despite the fact that you're not actually moving at a constant speed, the difference is so subtle and the duration of the difference so brief that it appears seamless to your eyes, even though you do get like zero pixels of movement on every fourth frame if you're doing the one, 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 zero pattern, for example. Um, but we don't really care about visuals, we care about speed. So. When on the ground, we exploit this by pumping um, when you have these two one, two, one patterns. So to review pumping real quick, because this applies to swimming mechanics, um, you, when you're moving north or you're moving left, your movement starts on the two one, two, one pattern. If you're moving right or you're moving down, and this is also true for diagonals, then your movement starts on the one, two, one, two pattern. So we exploit this behavior by resetting the pattern whenever you're moving up or left so that we get more twos. So essentially if I pump the left button like this or I pump the, the top button when I'm moving left, either one, or I could even be moving right and, and pumping top. No, no, that would be anti-pumping. <laughs> so if I'm moving up, I can pump right and left. But if I'm moving left, I can pump up and down, I think. I don't, I don't remember which one's anti-pumping. In any case, the whole point is that we're trying to reset the pattern so that we get like two, 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 one, two, one, two, 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 one, two, whenever we pump like that. Um, so that's an exploitable mechanic. And this should all be very familiar to you if you know about pumping. Um, but the reason I'm mentioning this stuff about subpixels in this video is because, little known fact, pumping actually works while you're swimming as well. So if I transition screens here and I can start pumping and uh, you can't really tell the difference because I'm moving so slowly already. I'm not actually mashing the A and B buttons, but uh, it's actually much more stark if I mash the A and B buttons. So here, let me pick up some momentum and show you. So I'm going to be moving up, diagonal left, and then I'm going to start pumping. It's really hard. You have to do one-handed pumping if you're mashing uh, the stroke buttons and the pumping buttons. Yeah, so you can kind of tell that your movement is um, faster there. I don't know if you could see it there, but it is faster, just like pumping on ground. Uh, you're going to get almost the same um, speed advantage. You don't want to run into walls here, though. That's that's a difference when you're swimming, because as soon as you touch a wall, your movement is arrested. And sometimes it's totally arrested, so it doesn't just cancel momentum in the direction of the wall. Um, and this can be actually kind of useful for aligning yourself on stuff. So if I swim down, I can press right. If I know exactly which tile I need to be line, lining up on, if I'm trying to do like um, a fairy revive or something like that, then this is useful to know that just running into a wall arrests your momentum in all directions. So speaking of stroking, you can stroke by mashing A, B, or Y. Um, obviously X will still bring up the world map, so don't do that accidentally, but you can mash A, B, or Y. Just be careful if you're about to um, move over shallow water because you could find yourself accidentally pressing the dash button or your sword or the mirror or you know whatever Y item you had selected. Um, so yeah, you can stroke by mashing A, B, or Y. However, it doesn't actually create momentum when you stroke. So if I'm at a standstill and I try to stroke, it doesn't really do anything. And I can even stroke, you can see here, like I'm not going any faster by stroking, you know, on its own. Um, what it does is it increases your maximum speed. 
And if you mash this like as fast as you can, then this maximum can raise up to about one and a half pixels per frame cardinally or one pixel per frame diagonally, which is exactly comparable, if I'm remembering correctly, to your ground-based movement speed. So that's kind of interesting. You know, if you're, if you're moving over water, your maximum speed anyway is the same as your ground speed. And then you can pump as well. However, momentum gets really complicated when it comes to actually reaching that max speed. Because once you hit that magic maximum of, uh, let's say, 1.5 pixels cardinally from stroking, um, then you will begin decelerating back to the non-stroking maximum of, you know, about a pixel per frame. It's actually 0.9 pixels per frame cardinally. And uh, at, you're, you're decelerating at a rate of 3 64ths of a pixels per speed per frame. So it's a really kind of slow deceleration. Um, but the issue is that your maximum speed begins to drop. So for every mash that you miss, um, your maximum speed will drop just a tiny bit. If you want to maintain maximum speed for as long as possible, basically you need to be mashing a pump button uh, once every two frames, or you could do it once every frame if you really wanted to, but it's only really necessary once every two frames. Um, so that's how you maintain optimal speed. Obviously that's not probably going to happen very consistently, and also, you know, the movement that you gain from doing this is not quite as great as the advantage you get from doing something like hovering, and this is a very comparable level of button mashing, so I'm not sure many people care that much about their swim movement speed to be mashing that quickly, but that's what you have to do, is one input at least every two frames. So in the worst case scenario, however, how this works is, you know, let's say I'm mashing, and let's pretend like I'm at the 1.5 pixel. You can see I'm actually kind of moving slower here, that's a great example. So I kind of let myself get a little bit slower. What I should do in this scenario is I should stop mashing and then start mashing again, and then I'll have a higher um, higher movement speed. And that's because as soon as you reach the, the you know, like normal maximum speed in a direction, the non-stroking maximum, which is 0.9 pixels per frame cardinally, then your top maximum that you would get from pumping resets back to 1.5 pixels. So uh, if I'm noticing that I'm kind of moving slowly again after pumping, it could be because I've decelerated and my maximum has changed. So I need to stop pumping and then start pumping again. Um, so this is a lot, it's very complicated. And to be honest, I don't fully understand all of this um, swim tech and movements. So what are the takeaways for speedrunners? So first of all, you should wait to start mashing the stroke buttons until you've reached the non-stroke maximum speed, which should take about half a second. So you don't want to pump immediately when you enter water because it doesn't do anything. In fact, all it does is it means that you're going to be at your maximum speed of 1.5 pixels per frame cardinally for less time because your maximum speed is going to reduce faster. So you just kind of want to wait like a half second, pick up momentum, and then start pumping. That's ideal. Once you do begin to mash, you need to mash as fast as you can to maintain that maximum speed. If you notice that your speed has really slowed, then stop mashing the stroke buttons and allow yourself to get back up to the non-stroke maximum or whatever you think that might be before mashing again. Um, your maximum speed is the same as your maximum ground movement speed. So it's generally faster to walk than to swim, even though your maximum speed is the same, uh, unless you can cover fewer tiles by moving diagonally, for example. So like Lake Hylia is a great example. It's obviously much faster for me to go from Mini Moldorm Cave to like this diving board over here than it would be to walk all the way around for several screens. However, if I was thinking about the difference between, you know, swimming from here to uh, like from the dark world, let's say, over to the hobo diving, diving board. There isn't a diving board in the light world, but it's gonna be much faster for me to walk, even without the boots. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there much faster by walking than by swimming because I can't actually move at the, uh, at the maximum rate constantly, especially with those like tight walls and interns and stuff. So keep that in mind. And then the final thing to remember about all this is that swimming movement still has subpixels like ground movement. So you can pump in the same fashion when you're moving left or you're moving up. So that's enough about swimming 101 and mechanics. Let's talk about the first sequence break, which is going to be fake flippers. So fake flippers is any time that you are swimming around in the water um, or when you don't have the flippers. So there are a few ways to get into the state, but they all have the same behavior, which is why I'm going over just the general behavior separately. 
Uh, touching land will eject you from the water, and you'll no longer be in fake flippers, obviously. So this can strand you sometimes, it's important to keep this in mind. Sometimes you want to avoid hopping onto land when you're in fake flippers. But one interesting property of fake flippers is that you will swim through shallow water. So instead of it um, kind of popping you back up on land like it would if, when you have flippers and you're swimming in water, you just swim right through it. Mostly this is a useful property of fake flippers because otherwise some sequence breaks would be very, very difficult or even impossible because you'd get stranded in places and you couldn't continue on through your sequence break. But it can actually be a liability in some situations as well. Well, not necessarily a liability, but a limitation of fake flippers. Uh, one interesting thing about fake flippers is if you are hit by an enemy while you're in fake flippers, then you will be ejected onto land at the point in which you had hopped into the water. So let's see if I can get hit by an enemy here real quick. Shoot this way. Shoot this way. You suck. Oh my god. That enemy is such a jerk. Uh, if that enemy had hit me, it would... Ah, I missed it. Oh my god, momentum. Momentum, why? There we go. Okay, so it ejects me back on to the land where I had jumped in. Uh, I jumped in on this screen, which is why I remembered where it was. However, if I were to be hit on a screen that I didn't jump in on, then uh, the game can really freak out. So here's, I'm gonna rest my momentum here against this rock. I showed you that tech earlier. So now the game is trying to figure out where to put me and it's put me way over here on the left side even though my sword is slashing over on the left. Um, if this happens to you, if you are fake flippers and you get hit on a screen that you didn't jump in at, uh, most of the time you just need to save and quit. Like there's not much that you can do here. It really depends on the screen. But be careful not to press any directional buttons because it is possible to trigger an infinite screen wrap. So now I have no control over Link. Um, I can't pause the game. I can't press select to save and quit. Uh, my game is just toast at this point. So let's just reload a uh, safe state to get out of that. Um, so be careful about being hit as well. This is only really true in the vanilla game. In the randomizer, which we're on the practice hack, hit, hack here, so we're not actually on the randomizer, but the randomizer has been changed to make it so uh, when you get hit by an enemy on a screen that you didn't initiate the fake flippers, it will just kill you instantly. It doesn't matter how much health you have. It doesn't even matter if you have a fairy in a bottle, it'll send you straight to the game over screen as if you didn't have a, uh, as if you didn't have a fairy in a bottle. As of the making of this video, there is some discussion about that. So I don't know if they're gonna change that entirely. There's also discussion about the fact that, you know, maybe when you're killed um, and you have a fairy in a bottle that it should revive you over the water um, instead of just give you a game over screen. And in fact, if you are in the vanilla game and you're one hit away from death and you have a fairy in a bottle and you are hit not on the screen that you jumped in, instead of, you know, ejecting you back onto land in some weird place, the death will happen first and you'll be fairy revived and you'll be just fine. So that's a good thing to know as well. And finally, one last thing to mention about fake flippers is that it is possible for you to swim on land. Uh, it doesn't really do anything interesting on its own that I'm aware of, but can be used in combination with other water traversal glitches like in Waterfall Fairy Cave, um, when you're trying to trigger a water walk, which we will go into. Um, it could be useful as well on, in some major glitch categories, or not categories, but just like major glitch applications. But um, I really don't know much about that. So for our, 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 you know, for our purposes, we're looking at um, how these glitches are useful for uh, minor glitches. So um, yeah, just know that there really is an application for that, but it is totally possible. And we'll be getting into, uh, you know, what happens when you do that in the Waterfall Fairy Cave later. So the most well-known and the most commonly seen way that you will see a fake flipper is done is via screen transition. So this is really simple. All you need to do is be very close to the edge of a screen transition, and then you hop into the water, and then you press a cardinal direction into the screen transition. So in this case, I'm gonna hold left when I hop in. So there we go, I just did the fake flippers. Uh, the reason that this works is the game doesn't check your flipper state in for like eight frames. I think it's exactly eight frames, which is just long enough for you to build up enough momentum to go through the screen transition. So a lot of people think that this is like on the first pixel that the game or first frame that the game will check your um, your flipper state, but it's actually eight frames. So uh, so yeah, it also people sometimes say it's like a pixel perfect trick, and what they mean is that. Uh, 
or yeah, frame perfect trick. What they mean is that you need to be holding left on the first frame you can when you're jumping in the water, but that doesn't mean that you have to press left like on an exact specific frame. So frame perfect is a little bit too strong of a word because as you're falling in, I can just be holding left in advance and then I'll be fine. So there is that. Uh, it is good to know that you don't need to be right next to the screen transition in order to for the fake flippers to work. You can be, uh, I think, up to two pixels away. I don't think you can be any farther away. Um, it is important though, if you're not, if you're like two pixels away, let's see if I can get two pixels away. Uh, that's okay. That's one pixel. That's two pixels. So if you're two pixels away, then you need to know that you can't hold a diagonal input because you simply will not be able to move, uh, build up enough momentum to move that far. So if I hold a diagonal input, you can see I don't go in. I'm in the same spot here. It just ejected me out of the same spot. But if I hold left cardinally, then it works. So diagonaling won't always mess up your fake flipper via screen transition, which a lot of people think it will, um, who are just starting to learn uh, fake flippers. But for most purposes, you don't want to be holding a diagonal because you don't know whether or not you are on the perfect frame, right? So uh, in general, you want to be as close as you can be to the screen transition, and you want to be holding a cardinal direction into the screen transition. So there are lots of different ways that you can set this up. I just demonstrated uh, using a visual reference, and the cue that I was using here is Link's shadow, or in this case, the old man's shadow, um, compared to this little grass tile that's uh, beneath him. So this, I believe, is one pixel away from the screen transition. So that's one way you might set this up. Uh, another is uh, simply bonking against something. Uh, it's kind of hard to bonk against the bush. I think this one actually might be pixel perfect. So it's like, why would you do a pixel perfect trick to line up a pixel perfect trick? But uh, there are other things that are easier to bonk against. And if I didn't have a sword, then I would be bonking against that bush. So that is something to consider, especially because in randomizer, you are often uh, in this area before you have a sword, if you're playing like open mode, for example. So that could be a really uh, good thing to know that you can just bonk against this bush and it'll line you up against the edge of the screen. Any screen that you're on, uh, any screen transition, this will work for. Just place a bomb and then have it eject you into the, uh, onto the edge of the screen transition and then you'll be set up perfectly to do a screen transition as well. Uh, Thick flipper via screen transition. I just said screen transition like 50 times. Uh, but here's another method. Um, this is one of those interesting things that is like specific to the, the location that you're performing the fake flippers. And this is one of the things I love about fake flipper via screen transition is that your setups can vary depending on where you're going to perform it. So it's nice to learn lots of different setups, which I find cool because I'm weird. So this is, you see this very commonly in uh, no major glitches. This saves a few seconds. Um, because you can fake flipper here before you have the actual flippers and then go into this whirlpool that's up north here and get to the uh, Death Mountain Ascent uh, quite a bit quicker. It's not really useful in the randomizer. Um, at least that whirlpool is not useful, but the setup is just as useful. So how this works is you line yourself up against the uh, this wall here on the south and an NMG, you would have the boots, so you'd be like dashing along and then you'd cancel your dash and then you'd be perfectly lined up as long as you cancel your dash into the wall using a diagonal down right input. So you're lined up against the wall. Then the idea is you walk up to this bush and you slash it, and then you need to press diagonal and that'll get you to, you know, right at the, at the screen transition. So I, act I actually uh, transition screens instead of hopping off the ledge there because my diagonal wasn't perfect. If you were to slow down that video, you would probably see that I had pressed right on one frame and then up on the next frame. So that's not good. That will ruin the, the setup. So what you do instead of doing what I was doing there, like slashing and then doing the input, is you do the diagonal input as you're slashing. So this kind of acts as a, a buffer a little bit because when you slash, your movement's arrested. So if I'm pressing the diagonal while I slash, then I'll be moving diagonal when I let go. So let's try that. Oh yeah, right. And the other part of this glitch that I didn't mention is uh, you also need to be holding your sword out. So, cause that slows your movement a little bit. So that's what's gonna get you lined up correctly. So let's try this again. So you hold your sword out and then I hold up and then I hold left. So, and I was holding a diagonal input there, which is why it didn't work that time. So dangers of doing diagonal inputs. So here's another spot that you might wanna do a fake flipper. I was showing off this spot before. Um, this is the whirlpool that would lead to the uh, witch hut area. So you most often see this in the randomizer when people are trying to um, 
turn in the mushroom quickly before they get the flute. But this is also very useful in inverted mode, where just routing through the light world is difficult in general, and the flute doesn't actually bring you to the witch's hut. The witch's hut is like one of the most isolated locations in inverted mode, so this is seen very commonly there if you don't actually have the flippers. Um, so how this works is there's a few different setups. Uh, one of them is I could get this uh, guard's attention. Uh, I need him to move north. Come at me, brah. Let's see. Let's use... Uh, I, don't think, I don't think either of these guys are going to work. But you can damage yourself into the transition. So uh, let's see if I can do this over here. Ah, uh, here we go. This is much better. All right. So now I just need to get over here and let him shoot me into the transition. Okay. So now I'm set up correctly and I can just hop in and then hold left you know, cardinally. Um, you could also use a, a visual cue, uh, which is what I do. Um, you just, I'm kind of just using the kind of splash effect at the bottom of Link Sprite, and I'm lining up the left edge of that with like the very center of the bump on the shallow sprite. So I'm trying to just center that, and then I just hold left from there. And I think that same visual cue might work on both sides, but honestly, I don't really know the visual cue for the other side because you're always setting up this glitch from the right side, ideally unless you miss and then do an early screen transition. There's just no, you know, there's no reason to set it up from the left side. So here I'm, I'm one pixel closer even than I was before. So uh, so yeah, that's that setup. Of course, you can also use the bomb setup here as well. There is one more setup for this that's uh, a little bit um, Kern-like in its stupid techness, but I'll be going over that later when I cover bomb jumping over water, which is way down here in the video. This is the witch hut area. So like now we've turned to the mushroom and let's say we want to fake flipper somewhere else. This is not commonly something that comes up. Uh, it happens more often in the dark world, but I'm pretty sure the setups are pretty much the same. Uh, but this is one of the most pain in the ass screen transitions that there is. I've turned on the coordinate indicator. You can see that on the top right um, as I'm moving around the, the Y is changing because these coordinates are particularly helpful and you can't really tell by the pixel, but you can look at the coordinates and kind of see what I'm talking about here. So this tr transition really sucks bad because if you do it perfectly, sometimes it doesn't work. So here I am, I am two pixels away from the screen transition and I'm holding left cardinally and it's not working. Let's see if I can get one pixel away. So that would be C06, there we go. And also still not working. So you can, if you slow down the video, you can see I'm not pressing the diagonal. It should work, but it's not. And it's because of my Y coordinate here. So I'm on 4B0, which is the top that I could be, uh, the topmost pixel I could be. Now I'm on 4B1, and you can tell that I can't move any further up. This is because when you're moving forward, your movement starts on the two pixel instead of the one. So that's different than if you're moving uh, down or if you're moving right, for example. So I can't actually get any closer because it like checks to see if I can move that direction. It checks two pixels ahead and it says I can't. So 4B1 is the highest that I can move here now. Now that I'm on 4B1 instead of 4B0 and I'm one pixel away from the edge, it'll work. And this is because when you hop into the water, um, you kind of like bonk your head essentially on this, uh, this bit of... Uh, you know, this bit of land on the other side. So it sees that you're trying to jump into a wall basically and it'll eject you and say, ah, that's not gonna work. That, for that reason, this screen transition can be a little bit difficult. Um, like, how are you supposed to tell if you're on 4B1 or 4B0? I mean, maybe you can tell, maybe there's some pixel reference you can use, you know, like using the top of your sprite or whatever, um, or your shadow if you look real closely, but it's just sucks, right? Like most of the time you're like, I, I don't know what the hell happened. But there are a couple of things that we can use. Um, I find that this is kind of a consistent setup. Um, bonk this tree, which little known fact has a fairy inside of it. Then walk down, line yourself up against this tree, and then just walk straight straight north. Don't dash or anything. And then you can um, transition straight to the right. So that's like a consistent setup. I think that'll work every time. It doesn't work on this side because the this lines you up on 4B0, which doesn't, isn't good for this side. I think it works on the other side because your... Um, your X pixel also matters here. I'm not exactly sure, but the other side does have the same issue where sometimes you'll just bonk against the wall even when you do it correctly. So this side, I don't really know a good setup. Um, like if I could get 4B1, yeah. So the, the tree will align me. If I'm on 4B1 here, check it out. If I'm on 4B1 and then I press right, the tree aligns me to 4B0 which is exactly where we don't want to be. <laughs> so I'm not really sure that there's a good way to line yourself up here. 
Um, but you could also just like, you know, pixel reference this and then just try a couple times. Like if you're in a rush, cause you know, you're speed gaming, uh, you could just do a pixel reference using the grass. Like here, I know I'm good. And then just try. And if it doesn't work the first time, then just back away from the ledge, you know, and then try again. So it didn't work that time. So I'm just gonna back away, it worked that time. And that might be faster than like trying to bonk and then bonk again. And maybe you don't have the boots, so. Uh, but that's a good thing to know. Okay, so while there are even more screen transitions that I could uh, show you, the general principles are the same. I just wanted to show you some of the more common ones and the exceptions. But here's one final look at a screen transition uh, fake flipper. So I'm in fake flippers right now, and I'm coming to grab the item that's on the hobo. This is really commonly seen in randomizer. So, you know, I go to the hobo, he gives me the item, which in this case is going to be vanilla. And uh, now I'm stranded, right? Like, I can't get back in the water. If I hop in, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be ejected from the water. And there's no screen transition right here, right, that I can line up on. So what do I do? Uh, well, I'm going to make a save state because I'm going to show a couple of ideas here. If I just go to the very edge, like I'm on the topmost area next to this column, and then I try to go, I'm not going to go far enough. But due to some weirdness when you're popping off corners, if I were to go just slightly further down and then hold right, then I am going to hop into the water right at the screen transition, and then I can continue on my merry sequence break. And this allows me to chain very flippering the hobo in with other stuff like going to Zora's domain. So that's a good thing to know. One thing to watch out for with this glitch though, is that it is possible to soft lock your game. And I'm gonna try to demonstrate that here. Um, but honestly, I don't really know it all that well. I think it depends on what your, um, what your pixel is that you start the dash. But basically, if you were to um, quick hop or dash off of a ledge on the wrong pixel, then you would screen transition before you've hopped in the water. And then you would basically do the whole, I'm gonna eject you on land, kind of thing from where you last hopped in the water, but we don't actually know where that is. So now your game's locked. And I can't demonstrate it here for some reason. Um, I'm pretty sure this is correct. It's like if you dash from, I don't know. I can't, I can't demonstrate it here, but basically just know that when you're doing this fake flipper, don't dash and also don't quick hop. So if you don't know what quick hop is, if you're holding the directional button, sometimes it takes, you know, like half a second or more for you to actually hop in the water. Um, so what you can do instead is you can tap A while you're doing that and then it will, you know, hop you in right away. So sometimes when you try that, when you try the quick hop, you'll be fine. But just know that I'm pretty sure even the quick hop can soft lock your game if you're not careful. So um, just play it safe and, and hold R. So a fake flipper via screen transition isn't the only way to get into a fake flipper. There is another more obscure way, and that is to die right as you are over deep water, which is kind of hard when you don't have the flippers because like, how do you get over deep water? Well, when you hop in the water, you actually have invincibility frames. So like right now I'm in midair and if something were to shoot me there, I would have iframes and I wouldn't get hit. But as soon as I like splash into the water, like right here, if I didn't have the invincibility frames from just falling in, then I would be vulnerable to damage. So like while I'm in this animation, I can be hit by something. So what we can do is we can use a bomb to, to kill ourselves uh, if we're you know one hit away from death. And if we have a fairy in a bottle, then we'll be revived. And let me just demonstrate what that looks like here. It's kind of precise. Um, yeah, but I mean, you have, you have a, actually you do have kind of a big window, um, but yeah. So here we go, being fairy revived. And when the animation stops, I will now be in fake flippers, even though I don't have the flippers. So this is a really much more obscure sequence break you don't see as often, um, but it can be incredibly useful. And the reason I'm showing this off in the dark world is you can kind of see the east side of the dark world is divided by two different kinds of obstacles. You have the water of this river, also the water of Lake Hylia, but you also have the hammer pigs that are on the bridge um, kind of east of where Link's house would be. So if you don't have the hammer and you don't have the flippers, you do not have access to the east side of the dark world unless you've defeated Aghanim 1. So this becomes very important and pertinent in the randomizer because the randomizer can force you to defeat Aga 1 for no other reason than to get access to the east side of the dark world. So if you know a way to sequence break over there, then this can be really huge. Um, unfortunately, there aren't any screen transitions that you can do a fake flipper on on either the dark Lake Hylia area or this river crossing area. So you have to use other sequence breaks in order for this to work. So for, I don't really have many tips for you for like lining up 
um, or timing this this bomb. Um, other than like it just takes practice. So if I go in too early, then my bomb will splash before it can explode. If I go in too late, then my bomb will kind of explode in midair before I hit the water. Um, but the good thing to know is that it's not gonna kill me. Like, unless I really royally screw up, it's not gonna kill me uh, not, over the, not over the water. So like, even if I dropped it and then I hopped in, I still have iframes for long enough that it's not gonna kill me there, you know? So you're, you're pretty much perfectly safe. The only thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna run out of bombs. Like that's the worst that's gonna happen here when trying to set up this, this glitch. Um, so I'm showing it off here with bombs. Now it is possible to do kill yourself in other ways using enemy RNG. I'll just try to demonstrate one of those ways right here, although it might not work. Um, and for this, I'm gonna want the fighter sword, ideally because it, it involves uh, slashing this Hinox here. Oops, oh my god, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. There we go. So, uh, uh, he dies to a bomb. <laughs> Let's try this again. I might not get this. Um, so if you slash him, he will face you. And if he's facing you when he begins his movement, then he will move quicker. And you can use this to manipulate the, um, the RNG a little bit. So you can see now I've kind of dragged him southward. I'm just gonna drag him to the left here if I can. Okay, he didn't look at me. Let's try it again. Anyway, the idea is you need to manipulate the Hinox RNG so that he's facing a particular direction. This might be easier from the south transition, actually. Come at me, bro. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna get him to move right. There we go. And now I need to get him to move north. Actually, he needs to be a little further right. Okay, I didn't, uh, I couldn't stay in his path. There we go. All right. So now I'm gonna get him to move north and then I slash him here, throws the bomb and then I hop in and then I kill myself on it. And I, I kill myself on the wrong bomb there. <laughs> so you can see it's very difficult and it relies on enemy RNG, which is why you really won't see this. And you know, you're gonna always have bombs in this situation. It's gonna be very rare that you don't have bombs, but there are some situations uh, most often I think the, the situation you'd come across is when you are trying to sequence break the super bomb. So the super bomb has the same item requirements, you know, as getting to the east side of the dark world normally, except for uh, the flippers don't matter because while you can swim with a super bomb, you cannot hop off ledges with it. So if you hop off a ledge, then its countdown timer will start. Um, there are things that you can use to, um, to, to manipulate this and still get the bomb anyway but you still need a way to, to swim through the water. And one of the interesting mechanics of the super bomb is you cannot use your own bombs for some reason while the super bomb is on the screen at all. While the super bomb timer is alive, while it's following you, it doesn't matter. You just can't use your bombs. So you can't fairy flipper in this case, but this might be one reason that you would try to like, manipulate the Hinox RNG here to uh, get you into fairy flippers. But that would be a very, very obscure situation. Uh, there are other enemies that you can use as well. Um, generally, I don't recommend uh, enemy RNG, although I am the stupid tech guy and I love those kinds of sequence breaks. They are very, very difficult. Um, I've spent a lot of time working on those setups and practicing them, and they just never, ever come up. They, it just will never come up in a randomizer. So the fairy revival uh, glitches are just much more useful for situations like this. You need to east, uh, sequence break to the east side of the dark world. Um, or more commonly, they are used in combination with other water traversal glitches in order to sequence break um, certain locations. So it is possible also to walk on water, as you see here. I don't have the flippers and I am walking on water. There's a few ways to do this, just like with fake flippers. Um, you can activate this in a, a couple of ways. Uh, also with fake flippers, you don't want to be hit by an enemy. So let me just demonstrate what happens if I were to be hit by an enemy here. Okay, so it's going to return me to the last place that I was standing. And I happen to be standing last on the water, so now I am stuck and I can't get out of here. Uh, luckily, you know, I can still save and quit just fine. And if I had the flute, then I could easily just flute away. Um, but yeah, you don't want to be hit by an enemy for that reason. It doesn't soft lock your game like it does if you're fake flipping. But this is also true for bonking. So I'll bonk, I'll splash in the water, it'll return me the last place I was standing, which is where I bonked, and now I'm kind of stuck. So you won't always be stuck. There are some situations where you might be fine, like if you were right next to land anyway. So now if I were to try to hop in the water, I'd be screwed, but luckily there's a diving board right here and I can <laughs> kind of double splashed onto land there. That was kind of funny. Um, so you're not always screwed. Uh, so why would you want to do a water walk over a fake flipper? 
Well, they, it allows you to get to a few locations you might not be able to in Fake Flipper. So for instance, the Hylia Island, you cannot sequence break with just a Fake Flipper of any kind because you will be swimming through the shallow water. So in the Dark World, there's a shallow water spot here that you're supposed to mirror on in order to get the item that's on the island. But in Fake Flippers, you swim through shallow water, so you won't be able to use the mirror because you can't use the mirror while you're swimming. But if you use a water walk instead, then you can actually sequence break the island that's on uh, the item that's on the island. Um, another sequence break that you might be able to do with water walk is to get the Zora Ledge item, usually in combination with some other water glitches. But that's not the only reason you might do water walk, right? Like, it might also be uh, the only way that you can sequence break some stuff, depending on which items you have and where you are. Uh, but also, it could be that. Um, that you just want to move faster, right? So your ground-based movement speed is the same as your maximum swimming speed. So it's just better to be walking. Uh, however, if you happen to have the boots, I don't have to tell you, you know, of the time gain that you get by dashing everywhere. Just know that if you did have the flippers and you were in a water walk state, that uh, when you touch shallow water, you'll be returned to a normal, a normal state again. So. Now I would swim when I return. So if I wanted to maintain that, uh, you know, if I don't have the flippers, then I can dash through shallow water and I'll just be, I'll be just fine. But for some reason, if you do have the flippers, then you won't. So if I wanted to dash everywhere and I didn't want to stop my walk on water because I liked the speed, then just know that you got to avoid shallow water a little bit. So the first way I'm going to show you to activate a water walk is uh, the most easy and also the most common, particularly in the randomizer. And that is to utilize the Waterfall Fairy Cave. So I'm in Fake Flippers right now, which is why I'm able to be in the water. And if I swim into the uh, into the cave here, this is one of those instances where I will be uh, swimming through the land and I accidentally triggered the fairy and now I'm gonna try to upgrade my bow. Uh, in the randomizer, I wouldn't have to worry about this unless I had a bottle. But uh, anyway, what'd you give me? Ah, just normal bow. Wow, that's so unexpected. So here I am, I'm swimming through the land, and as I mentioned earlier, there's nothing really too fun I can do in this state. Um, however, if I exit again, then uh, I will be walking on water if I have the Moon Pearl. So I do have the Moon Pearl right now, which is why this worked. If I didn't have the Moon Pearl, then I would just be swimming still. So I would still be in fake flippers. Nothing would have changed. Um, but if I do have the Moon Pearl, then um, I'm walking in water. And I think it has to do with the fact that whenever you enter the overworld, there is a Moon Pearl state check that happens, or like a state check that happens if you have the Moon Pearl, which interrupts the flippers check or something like that. Anyway, just know that in order for this to work, you need to fake flipper inside the Waterfall Fairy Cave, leave again, and you have to have the Moon Pearl. So what are the applications of this? Well, on its own, a water walk via Waterfall Fairy only allows you to sequence break one location, and that is the Waterfall Fairy herself. So in the randomizer, there's a couple of chests here you can open up, and now you can see I'm not swimming through the land, I'm walking on it. So I can just exit the cave and re-enter again in order to be walking in the cave and then grab those items. Uh, it is useful in combination with other glitches to sequence break certain locations like the Zora Ledge. I could also use it just for a quick speed advantage to dash through all the deep water of um, Zora's Domain, which actually has a really nice path here. If you just line up on these curved areas, being careful not to bonk against anything, then it will just uh, send you perfectly, I'm not touching the control at R here, right? Send you perfectly up to where Zora is. So it's just a faster way to get up to Zora as well. There's a great quote I love from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that goes, there is an art to flying, or rather a knack. The knack lies in learning how to throw yourself at the ground and miss. Clearly it's the second part, the missing, that presents the difficulties. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Um, we're gonna try to throw ourselves into a pit and miss, and that will, it won't allow us to fly, but close enough, it allows us to walk on water. So basically how we do this is we interrupt our fall into a pit. And uh, one way that you can do this is by dashing your pit. So I'm just gonna try to get it here, and it didn't work. I can check if it worked by holding my sword out on a any kind of stair, and a diving board will work in this case. And if my movement is fast, then uh, I know that I've got it, and if it's not, then I haven't. Um, but I'm just gonna try a different setup here that's a little bit more consistent. And now I've got it. All right, so now it's activated. Let's make a save state. And 
how I, uh, or sorry, it's armed now. How I activate it is I hop off of the ledge south into the water. So now I'm walking on water and I can go where I please. Um, this gets disarmed in many, many different ways. It's actually very easily disarmed. One of the ways it gets disarmed is if you've already done it. So you can't just chain it infinitely. Like, well, you can chain it, but you can't do it infinitely using an interrupted pitfall. You only get one shot after you interrupt the pitfall. Another way that it gets disarmed is, um, let's just reload our safe state here. If you were to fall south off of a ledge um, that was onto ground, then it would be disarmed as well. This is not true if you were to fall like any, any other direction off of a ledge or even off of a diagonal of a ledge. As long as you don't fall straight south uh, onto land, then it doesn't get disarmed. However, this ledge is a bad example of that because this ledge goes into water. And if you're ever ejected from the water, then it will get disarmed. So you can see now I don't have the, the stair speed anymore. Um, other ways that it gets disarmed are if you were to mirror somewhere, uh, if you were to die and be fairy revived, um, if you flew, if you save and quit. Uh, one interesting thing to know is uh, if I were to walk into a cave, I can exit again and the glitch is still armed. And this is actually really useful in some sequence breaks. However, if I'm in a cave, and this is true not just with caves, it's true with dungeons, basically anything that's not the overworld, if I were to press left or right while I'm in that underworld area, then it gets disarmed for some reason. So um, just be cautious of that, uh, depending on your setup. Another reason that it gets disarmed is just by walking too close to a pit. So um, that was much closer than I even needed to be to disarm the state, but now it's disarmed and I can't do anything. So be cautious about that. That's, that's useful to know in, in some setups. So because this glitch relies on being interrupted by falling in a pit, the first thing that will be good to learn uh, are the overworld pits that can be used in this way, and also underworld pits, which are usable without moving left or right. So let's start in the light world overworld. There's, of course, this pit east of the graveyard, which is not a very useful place to set up a water walk um, as far as sequence break goes, but it could be useful, I guess, for routing and movement in like some pretty fringe scenarios. Uh, another pit that's in the light world overworld is um, this pit that drops you down into the back of escape, so you could set up a water walk here, but, you know, see the previous point about how useless this might be. There's also the pit in the Lost Woods area, and there's the Lumberjack pit. Um, the Lumberjack pit is uh, really difficult to use. I don't even know that it's possible because the pit is so large that uh, you often deactivate it right after activating it. You kind of want a smaller pit in order to do this on. Um, but yeah, you could, you could do this from the Lost Woods pit as well. This I could maybe find, you know, I could maybe believe that there's some application for this because there is the, uh, let me just make sure I got this because there's no easy place to check this here. So I need to do a more consistent setup. There is this, uh, whirlpool that's just a couple of screens over here. So like if I was checking the Lost Woods area, I could do something really weird and, uh, you know, let me just make sure I got it. Although I could also just hop in just fine. I could do something really weird and then chain Lost Woods check-in with like going to Ice Rod Cave or, you know, checking Lake Hylia. So that might come up. Um, and then the only other overworld pit that we can use uh, to set this up is the Uncle Pit. And actually that's a lie. There are a couple of other pits that you can use. There's the Well in Kakariko and there's the drop down that you go from the Magic Bat. Um, you would need to do some funny stuff in order to be able to activate a, a uh, water walk off of an interrupted pitfall there, but it is technically possible, uh, I believe. The Uncle Pit, um, potentially useful for a water walk in Lake Hylia if you're just like coming from the north side of Lake Hylia, but uh, uh, in fringe scenarios that we're going to get to in a bit. So from the Light World Underworld, we're in a convenient spot now. It's like I planned this. Uh, you can go up to uh, a couple of places that are near the south shore um, that are very useful. So there's the Ice Rod Cave that has pits. And uh, I'm going to have to bomb open the uh, the entrance here. Oh, it's already bombed open because I probably already set this up. Uh, yeah, so this is a cave, right? So even if I set it up here, it's not going to it's not gonna work, right? Because like I have to press right in order to exit the thing. 
An interesting thing about pressing right is if I had it activated and I was damage boosted to the right, like either by an enemy or my own bomb, you know, even if I didn't fall in a pit there, then it would still disable it just like I had pressed right. However, and this is really important, if you're dashing along a curved wall and it aligns you, that for some reason does not disarm the state like pressing left or right would or damage boosting in that direction would. So this is useful in both Ice Rod Cave and Mini Moldorm Cave. And what you do is you just get close to the edge of the pit, you dash along the wall and you don't press any directional buttons. And I can just check that I have it um, armed here just fine. Uh, this is useful for sequence breaking into Lake Hylia. Don't jump in right next to there because you'll get stuck on this uh, this waterfall and you won't be able to go any further. That doesn't do anything if you hop in there. So you'll either want to hop in here uh, if you want to activate the water walk right away, or you'll want to do like a um, fake flipper via screen transition elsewhere. So yeah, so there's the pit there in the Ice Rod Cave, and you can also use the pit in the Mini Moldorm Cave for the same purposes. In the Dark World, our options are much more limited. So there are plenty of pits in Skullwood. So there's like a pit here, there's a pit there. There's like a billion of them, right? So uh, that's nice in the Skullwoods area, which can be useful for sequence breaking to the east side of the Dark World. If you don't have a fairy, or if you just want a easier setup, um, then you can do this here. Uh, so there's some pits in the Skullwoods area. However, we're kind of short on overworld pits in the Dark World. And other than those two pits, the only other pit that we can use is the Ganon pit. So yeah, it is possible to set up a water walk off of this pit. Um, I'm gonna use the bonk method here. Yeah, I got it. So now I can go do some stuff, but obviously the applications of this are much more limited because in what situation do you have access to Ganon in which you need to go sequence break something, right? So, but just know that that is possible. As far as Dark World Underworld pits, as far as I am aware of, there are no known setups for arming a interrupted pitfall water walk in the underworld of the dark world. And that's just because of where the pits happen to be in dark world areas. Like there's just no way that you can get to the entrance without pressing left or right. Um, so yeah, good luck setting it up in the dark world. So as far as setting up the interrupted pitfall via dashing next to a pit, which is the way I've primarily shown, so I don't have too much more that I need to say on that matter, but there are a couple of different ways that you could do it. So one is just get near the edge of the pit, dash, and then kind of go do your water walk. This is um, kind of a hard way to set it up, especially if you don't have a diving board nearby to check out and see if it worked. Uh, and I don't really recommend that setup. There is an easier way, however. If you dash um, in a straight line near a pit, it doesn't even have to be as close as like the manual method like that. But if you're near a pit and you bonk, then it's like automatic. It, there's a huge pixel window that it will work. And it has to do with what happens when you bonk. And it's not important that you bonk even near the pit. Like if I were to do it this direction and bonk, I would also have just activated it as well, which I don't think I can show off here. This, I don't think that's a stair. Yeah, I can't I can't really demonstrate that it's activated there. But in any case, it is, <laughs> unless I get near the pit again. So, um, so yeah, it doesn't matter where you bonk as long as you bonk. So if I were to dash and then interrupt my dash before I bonk, then it's less likely that I will have set it up. So in the Skull Woods, that's really convenient. This is a common place you set up a interrupted pitfall water walk via dashing in order to get to the east side of the dark world. Um, just know, don't, don't like, you know, beat your head on the wall you know, trying to do this a million times like I did the first time that it came up in a race. I tried that like maybe 15 times before I gave up. Instead, just simply do this. Dash, you know, bonk across the pit. And then when you walk around the pit to get to where you want a sequence break, just make sure you're lined up like right next to this tree so that you're as far away from the pit as possible. And, uh, and then it'll be set up just fine. And of course, we've already talked about that if you're in the underworld, you know, you can also line yourself up on a diagonal wall. This is also true in the overworld, it just doesn't come up ever. So um, yeah, you're not actually using this, <laughs> this lake to sequence break anywhere. I was just demonstrating that it worked. But there is another way to interrupt your pitfall, and that is another fairy revival method. You can see there's kind of a theme here in all these stupid tech videos. A lot of them involve being revived by a fairy. It's one of my, one of my favorite, uh, favorite ways to set up glitches, and one of my favorite items in the game is a fairy in the bottle. So how this works is it, it exploits a Japanese 1.0 exclusive bug. Uh, I don't think it's any other versions, which is that as you're falling in a pit, you can still be damaged. This is really weird. They patched that out of later versions so that that wouldn't happen. Um, sometimes you might've noticed this, you might've taken deaths in really bizarre places that you shouldn't have uh, because of this glitch. 
Um, so, you know, one thing you could do is you could get the attention of a guard like this and then have him kill you as you're falling in a pit. You're going to be a little bit hard pressed to time that correctly. Uh, I don't even know if I should really be trying it here <laughs> live. Let's, let's give it a shot. Stay, stay here. Okay, he lost interest. Hey, it works. So I'm going to be fairy revived and then I can hold a directional button as uh, to escape the pitfall, which is another interesting mechanic of this. So now I'm stuck in the falling animation and that's how I know that I've armed this particular glitch. Um, so I can also like check my speed on the stair, I'm fine. But honestly, there's obviously a big enough visual reference. And I can activate this in the normal way by hopping off the south facing ledge, right? It works the same as a pitfall in, on, in all other ways. So you could use uh, enemy RNG. Uh, another easier way though, is by using a bomb. So let me just kill this guard and demonstrate the bomb method. Uh, I'm just gonna place a bomb near the pit. I'm just gonna, I don't know why I'm destroying that grass. That's a different setup. And I almost didn't get myself before I fell in the pit. And then I'm gonna hold a D button after I get fairy revived to escape the pitfall. All right, so there you go. That's the much more consistent way to set that up. And it, this is a really cool visual reference too. Like if you wanna know when the, the glitch gets disarmed, uh, so there I was. I was just like one or two pixels away from the rightmost place I could be on that tile, and that was enough to disarm the um, the water walk. So this can be kind of a useful visual indicator for did I accidentally disarm the water walk somewhere? Um, yeah, so there's the bomb method. It's good to know that just like with the dash method, some pits don't really work, like the lumberjack pit. I'm pretty sure it's not possible to do that without disarming the state as your um, rescuing yourself. Um, and also, it's difficult to do this in the underworld. So our normal methods, like the Ice Rod Cave and Mini Moldorm Cave, don't really work because you're going to need to press a D button as you're exiting the cave. Uh, you're, first of all, you're going to need to press a D button to rescue yourself from the pitfall, and then you're going to need to press a D button as you exit the cave. So we have to have different setups here. Um, one setup that I like is the Uncle Pit. So normally the Uncle Pit is not useful for a dash interrupted pitfall, but for very uh, fairy revival pitfall, it's kind of nice because it's probably the closest pit to where you would want to use this glitch, uh, being uh, Lake Hylia. Um, so this actually makes this pitfall, interrupted pitfall, relevant again. So let's take a look at specifically how you might sequence break this item on the Zora Ledge. It's so close but so far, right? Ordinarily, you can see this from down below on that uh, shallow water tile, um, but you can't actually get up to it because there is a waterfall in your way. Um, so the big barrier to entry here, let's just dash on over to this waterfall, is this guy, right? So even though I'm in a boots walk right now, if I were to hop into the water, it would just, you know, eject me on the land. Now it's done the check. This is the last place I was standing, and I'm kind of stuck here, right? Like, I can't even get to the shallow water. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. So this is kind of a big bit. Well, there are in fact so many ways that you can sequence break the Zora Ledge. Uh, and a lot of them I would say are pretty unknown, or at least like people think that they can't get to the item on the Zora Ledge even when they can. So I'm gonna break this section down into, um, into a couple of, of different areas. One is gonna be, what is the absolute minimum items that are required to get this item on the Zora Ledge? And the other is gonna be, uh, what are the convenient setups? Because the minimum items required are kind of difficult and do require practice and skill. Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk about routing, like how you might be able to route this in with other checks, which is sometimes a big problem with the sequence breaking Zora Ledge. So the minimum items that are required to sequence break the Zora Ledge without the flippers are a fairy in a bottle or the boots. So yeah, either of those, that's it. That's all that it takes. So these both work by uh, arming a water walk state via interrupted pitfall and chaining it with a fake flippers via screen transition. So those are the only things that you need to do. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate the uh, interrupted pitfall via boots here because it's a lot faster to set up. If you're gonna do the interrupted pitfall via fairy revival, I recommend the uncle pit. There really is not a good pit to set up on, like no matter which pit you set up on, you're going to have to walk quite a ways. So that's probably the best one. Um, but then you have to walk all the way around the Lake Hylia in order to get to the South Shore because we need this this particular 
screen transition. So I'm setting up for a fake flipper via screen transition. Now, before I told you that hopping in water and then getting ejected from it would disarm your water walk, you know, arm, <laughs> your water walk state that's, that's armed. But uh, if you aren't interrupted, if you aren't ejected and you are in the, you're swimming normally, then you'll be fine. In fact, speaking of which, let me make sure that I take my flippers off. All right, so I don't have any flippers on now. So I'm just gonna do a, um, a fake flipper via screen transition. And it's very important here that I get this on the first try. If I mess it up and I get ejected, then I have to set up my, um, my water walk state again. So I got it, I'm fine. And now I'm going to fake flipper all the way through Zora's domain. And this is quite a problem because you can't get hit by any enemy and you also can't touch land, which actually in Zora's domain can be an issue. So let's see if I can do it here. I'm just gonna take it a little bit slow through this first bit. All right, now this bit, I really recommend moving quickly because if you wait too long, then more enemies have time to jump up out of the water. And if you go fast, then you can kind of like this enemy, for instance, you can kind of get around it. So a little contrary to like, you know, what your instinct might be. Okay, I was a little slow there. I'm gonna pause buffer just to see which direction the fireball is gonna go. All right. Made it just fine. Oh God. Okay, I might kind of back myself into a corner here. Okay, I'm fine. It was a good Zora. <laughs> it wasn't one that was gonna screw me. All right, so now I'm pretty safe and clear once I've made it past here. So now I'm at the waterfall and I'm just gonna hop off um, and that's gonna activate the uh, boots walk. All right, so now I am in water walk state and I can just splash back on the land over here and pick up the item. So it works the same way with fairy flippers. Um, but yeah, obviously you need to set it up on there. Or sorry, with a uh, interrupted pitfall via fairy revival, but obviously you need to uh, set it up in a different place. So that is obviously very difficult, which is why I have a whole nother section dedicated to more convenient setups. And some of them, by God, are they so much more convenient. It's just that they require more items than just one of the boots or the flippers. So let's take a look at those. So the idea here is we want to avoid having to uh, fake flipper all the way through Zora's domain. We can see that that was pretty treacherous. So I've got a, um, a interrupted pitfall water walk state armed, as you can see there. I've actually uh, armed this on the ice rod cave just because it's easier, but again, still possible with the interrupted pitfall via fairy vibe. You just got more distance to walk. And I'm going to show off a couple different setups here. Uh, you do need to do a screen transition with this one as well, just like with the other setup I showed you. So um, you're chaining a couple of states here. So I still have the boots walk armed. I still have the, I'm still uh, fake flippering, but I don't have to fake flipper quite as far. I'm just gonna fake flipper to the waterfall fairy cave. So cancel my momentum a little bit before I walk in the cave, then I don't have to spend as long inside this cave. Little trick there. All right, now if I've got the moon pearl, now I'm in a water walk state. And this water walk state doesn't disarm the other water walk state that I have armed. So I just chained together three different water traversal uh, glitches in order to make this much easier for me. So I can simply dash through Zora's domain. This is easy, right? Like I showed you before, you can just line yourself up on some on some uh, wall ledges here and you won't bonk, you'll be just fine. And then I can just dash right off of the waterfall. So the other convenient setup uh, works in a similar way. Um, we're gonna arm a water, uh, water walk. I did this on the ice rod cave yet again. Um, and I'm going to prematurely activate the water walk. So this is also useful if you had routed in Hobo, for example. A lot of people will um, save a water walk from Hobo so they can dash up to Zora's Domain and through Zora's Domain. And then let's say you saw an item on the ledge that you really wanted and you happen to have a fairy in a bottle. Uh, well, this is the way you could get it. So you might decide to do it this way because it works better for your routing. You might also decide to do it this way because you don't have the Moon Pearl. So you can't chain together the other water walk state. So make sure you're low health. Um, you could also get in low health once you get over here, if you had enough bombs, speaking of which. Uh, but yeah, yeah, not necessary to set this up in advance, um, unless you don't have enough bombs. So I get to the waterfall, and I can't just hop off it and activate a water walk state, because um, this was the interrupted pitfall water walk that I was in, not the waterfall fairy cave water walk. So it was disarmed when I hopped in the water. Instead, what I can do is I can do a fake flippers via fairy revival. And this setup is a little bit more consistent because of the length of the ledge here is a little different than some of the other overworld ledges. So the setup I use is um, I first I'll hop in the water and then drop in the bomb as soon as I appear on land. Oops, that's not a bomb. Hop in the water, drop a bomb, put it over my head. As soon as I stop flashing, maybe a little bit before, then I hop in the water. 
Oh, okay, I'm I'm a liar. I forget what my consistent setup is then. You're just gonna have to eyeball it. <laughs> Maybe it's exactly the same as the other ledges and I was uh, completely mistaken. That was almost it. There we go. So I used six bombs there. It might require a little bit more effort, which is why I do recommend the Moon Pearl one as the more convenient setup. But anyway, now I am in Fairy Flippers. I just have to be careful not to get hit by those enemies that spawn there. But if I'm fast, then they don't even appear quick enough. And there we go. I got it a lot easier than having the Fairy Flippers all the way through this order. Most of the time, when you are sequence breaking the Zora Ledge item, you'll already know what's on it. Because most of the time, it's not worth coming all the way over here with you know the setups or whatever to, um, to do this blind. But let's say you did want to do everything here in one go. Like... Either you got a hint about what was on the ledge, but you haven't checked the rest of the Zora's domain, or you just want to take a gamble and set it all up in advance and have the opportunity to check it if it is something good or to grab the item right now and avoid a double dip of Zora's domain and save some time that way. Well, it is possible to do this. Uh, there are some downsides um, and there are some gotchas, which I will show you now. Um, first of all, if you are in Waterwalk, let's say, and let's say I have a fairy in a bottle too, I don't at this point <laughs> on this save state, but let's say I did so that I could potentially still sequence break um, the Zora Latch right now. Well, if I go to Zora and I grab the item on Zora, give him his, give him his money. Listen to him speak Japanese. All right, so he's... He's, uh, you know, throwing the item at me. You can see I'm still in Water Walk here, even though I've talked to him. However, if I were to pick up this item, uh, I'm no longer in Water Walk. So I actually had the flippers, <laughs> which is why I went into a swim there, <laughs> which is a little bit funny. But um, say I didn't have the... Oh, well, I had the flippers because I just picked them up from Zora. Well, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so now I can't sequence break the, the Zora ledge, right? Unless Zora actually happened to give me flippers there. So, uh, but you'll notice that uh, I was able to see what the item was and not pick it up. So I could pay Zora, he can throw the item at me, and then I can just not pick it up if it's nothing, like it's just rupees or whatever, and then walk south and still do the Zora ledge glitch. So that's one way that I can check what the item is without ruining my, um, my sequence break. If Zora had an item that was good, it was like progressive, and so did the Zora Ledge, well, then I have to double dip it anyway, right? Unless I happened to have found the flippers before I went there, which I obviously didn't. So, uh, so yeah, if that was the case, then just pick whichever item you want more at this point, and you're just gonna have to double dip the area. Another consideration is uh, checking the Waterfall Fairy Cave items. So if I go into the Waterfall Fairy Cave, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm in my water walk state here. Let's say I set it up by entering and re-exiting or whatever. Um, in the vanilla game, I could just walk right up to the fountain, right, and then trigger the thing. But in the randomizer, the chests are to the left and to the right. So I'm going to have to press left or right um, directionally, and that's going to disable my water walk state. So I can't really get the items inside of the waterfall fairy cave um, unless I was doing a boots walk from waterfall fairy cave chain to uh, fairy revive. So I couldn't do, like, a double boots walk chain or, you know, yeah, I, I couldn't do that, for example and still grab those items. So what I could do instead is I could come up to the Zora ledge first before even checking Zora, see if it's something I want. And if it's not something that I want, uh, which most of the time it won't be, then I go back and then go inside the waterfall fairy cave, uh, you know, with my boots walk or my fake flippers, doesn't really matter. Um, and then grab the items and then leave again. It's good to know that even if I had entered this cave with a, um, a water walk via boots walk from before, I can exit again and still be in water walk as long as I have the moon pearl. So then now the other water walk glitch has been activated here and I'm just fine. So that's another way that you might be able to safely check these items and get the Zora ledge item. If you had boots walked your way to this area, entered, or even fake flippered, entered then exited, you know, you, you could check all the items inside there. Now I'm in a water walk state and as long as I have a fairy in a bottle, I can still sequence break the Zora ledge. So basically, uh, this is not going to save you time in most cases, uh, particularly if you don't have the perfect wombo combo of uh, boots or moon pearl and fairy in a bottle. If you just have the boots and a moon pearl, for example, 
it's gonna be difficult to chain this all together and your boots walk is gonna be better spent doing stuff like dashing across Lake Hylia to check the hobo, for example. So most of the time it's not worth it, but let's say you got a hint about, you know, the Zora ledge or there's an item out in the open, for example, and you are hoping that it's a Zora ledge item, then you might wanna know how to do this, um, do this all together. So there are other techniques that you can use to traverse water. Um, I'm gonna go over a class of techniques that um, require you to be the bunny and also allow you to get places as the bunny. Um, I just want you to know that I've covered all this before in another stupid tech video on minor bunny glitches. So I'm not gonna be going over it quite as comprehensively as I did there, but link to that video down in the description. I did want to go over some of the techniques though and how they apply to you know thinking about water traversal. Um, it's good to know that most of these sequence breaks, what you're sequence breaking is having the moon pearl and not the flippers. And in fact, um, two of them do require you to have the flippers anyway. So it's not, you're not really sequence breaking the flippers. You're just sequence breaking the limitation that you can't normally swim as a bunny. The first one that I want to go over is wriggling. So you can see when I enter the water and I do have the flippers as a bunny, I kind of like wade in a little bit. It's kind of this funny, you know, glitch animation. However, if I were to rhythmically tap at just the right rhythm, um, then I kind of gain progress. So if I do a long hop, um, then I know that I'm tapping too fast usually. And uh, yeah, and if I'm just splashing around, maybe I'm tapping too slow. But yeah, if you get the rhythm right, then you can uh, move infinitely in any direction. Uh, one application for this is to get to the Hylia Island, right? So now I'm on the Hylia Island. It does require me to have gotten to the Ice Palace Island in some other way, and I can, I can get that item. Wriggling doesn't have too much use as a pure water traversal method. Usually it's just useful in setting up other um, minor bunny glitches. Uh, there are maybe some applications in some situations, like you could wriggle over to the southeast screen transition in Dark Lake Hylia to the area that we call the Overworld Shopping Mall. That could be useful in like um, Entrance Randomizer or if you really just wanted to check that hint over there, I guess. Um, but yeah, otherwise you're not going to find much, much use for it. Uh, in Inverted Mode, there are maybe a few more uses. So there's the Whirlpool south of Link's house, and uh, you could wriggle into that in order to get to the Witch's Hut. Ordinarily, you can't get to the Witch's Hut as a bunny because there are bushes blocking your way that you can't pick up or slash as a bunny. So ordinarily, you would need to be in some kind of Link state in order to get to the Witch's Hut area, which is a long way away, it takes a long time to set up, and there are better uses for a Link state when you're mobbing around inverted mode without the Moon Pearl. But if you could just wriggle into the Whirlpool, then you can get over to the Witch's Hut area just fine. And it's good to know that you can actually turn in the mushroom as a bunny. It's one of the few Y items you are allowed to use. So you can turn it in just fine and check the item that's there. Uh, in Inverted, you could also uh, maybe use Wriggle to get to the Waterfall Fairy Cave, but the sequence of events that would lead that to happen are just ridiculous. Like, if you can get to the overworld screen where the Waterfall Fairy Cave is, you have better tools at your disposal to get into the Waterfall Fairy Cave than wriggling, most likely. So uh, so yeah, limited application as far as water traversal goes, but you could do stuff like sequence break the Hylia Island. So another method that you can sequence break both the Moon Pearl and the Flippers is an overworld bunny revival. If you die while over deep water, then you will be revived as Link. That's the primary purpose of Overworld Bunny Revival is to sequence break having the Moon Pearl. Now I'm Link, now I can do lots of stuff. But if I also didn't have the flippers, as I don't have in this case, it's good to know that I'm also currently in fake flippers. So I'll swim through shallow water. If I get hit by an enemy, I'll be ejected back onto land. And that's just good to know. So like you could also do an Overworld Bunny Revival in order to get the fake flippers. Like maybe that would actually be useful for you, not just to be Link, but also to, you know, to have fake flippers. Uh, but if I get hit, then, you know, I'm returned to the overworld. And right now, you can see I'm pressing B, I can't actually slash my sword. This is because I'm in a state that we call Lonk, or Lunk, or also Lousy Link, that is kind of like um, Super Bunny, in that there are some things you can't do. Uh, except for, in this case, instead of not being able to use Y items, I can't slash my sword. But it's easy to disable it. Oh, I also can't dash or pick up anything, or open chests. Uh, but it's easy to disable it. All you gotta do is get hit or jump in the water. Um, oh wait, not jump in the water. Sometimes jumping in the water works, but getting hit always works. Anyway, uh, mirroring back and forth, but that would remove my link state in this particular case. So anyway, 
Uh, Overwood Bunny Revival, mostly useful to sequence break the Moon Pearl requirement, but good to know that it is also a water traversal. And last but not least, we have the uh, Surfing Bunny glitch. So to set this up, it's fairly easy. Um, you do want the flippers for this glitch, and I'm just going to put a mirror spot on the bottom of this diving board. If I was not in a fake link state there because of the overall bunny revel I had done, then I could simply hop off the edge of the diving board in order to make sure I'm on the bottom most pixel. That's important. Then you line up with this wall here and then just walk or dash south. You'll hop into the portal and uh, now you'll be in Surfing Bunny. So Surfing Bunny is kind of interesting. Normally, if you were to mirror to a different world that's over deep water, you would mirror bonk because you're not supposed to be able to do that. Um, so anyway, now I am, I was in Surfing Bunny, but I touched the land. I needed to get rid of, get away from that guy that was trying to bomb me. Um, and then, yeah, I can do, you know, I can try to wriggle into the screen transition here or whatever. So Surfing Bunny is a little bit more practical, I would say, as a means of water traversal than wriggling because it's so much faster. Um, there are also just more ways to, uh, to initiate it. So now that I've done a screen transition by wriggling, I'm also in, uh, in Surfing Bunny state. So Surfing Bunny is slightly different than a fairy flipper or fake flipper state, although it does act similar in some ways. So if I were to get hit again, it would try to return me to land, which in this case would be on a different screen, and that would potentially soft, my, soft lock my game. If I was in the randomizer, I'm pretty sure it would game over, although I'm not positive that it's also true for Surfing Bunny, because like I said, the state is slightly different. Um, it does have slightly different behavior. One of the interesting things is you can mirror uh, when you're over shallow water and you're in Surfing Bunny. So. Uh, one application of this is like, you know, coming over to the east side of the dark world in order to then hookshot across, but then you'd have to do an overall bunny revival, and anyway, it, it gets crazy. That's for the other video for us to go and do. So we're back in Skullwood so that I can show off um, more methods to sequence break the Hylia Island. We've already seen one way. I showed you how to wriggle there, and you could wriggle there after doing a surfing bunny. So that way it does require the flippers. The item that you're breaking there, sequence breaking, is having the moon pearl. Uh, but what happens if you need to sequence break having the flippers? Well, we can't do a uh, fake flippers. That's not going to work for us. We've already covered why. Um, so we need to do some kind of water walk. There's no equivalent to waterfall fairy water walk um, in the dark world that I'm aware of. And there's also no way to get a waterfall fairy style water walk in the dark world that I am aware of. Pretty sure that one doesn't exist. So you need to do an interrupted pitfall. And Skullwood's pits are the only place really to do that, unless you've already defeated Aga 2 and you can use the Ganon pit. So uh, that's why I'm here. I'm going to show off again the, um, the boots method, because it's a lot simpler. So we just set it up on a Skullwood's pit like that. I really personally like the consistent 100% of the time bonking method. But you could also do the quicker if you get it first try, um, just dashing near the pit. Then we uh, run over to the east, to the river, and then we make sure to hop in so that we're hopping in facing south. That's very important, otherwise the water walk doesn't work. Then you go into this whirlpool, and now you have to navigate uh, the dark world Lake Hylia. So the main obstacles are gonna be little patches of ice like that. You don't wanna accidentally dash into one and then you'll be stranded on land. So just walk over here and now we're standing on the shallow water and can freely mirror over to Lake Hylia Island. You can bomb jump over water, say what? No, it's true, you can bomb jump over the water and it works like any other bomb jump, except you also kind of skip across the water. So you can go much farther than the normal two tile maximum or sometimes three tiles if you're also doing a rail clip into a bomb jump as you do inside of Spec Rock Cave. Anyway, how this works is you need to go from something that you can stand on, this could be shallow water, it could be land, and you need to land on something that is not shallow water. Although you can skip across the shallow water, it can't be your final destination. So, and that's kind of important for uh, determining which locations you can sequence break to. So the way that you set this up is pretty simple. Just get on the bottommost pixel, pick up a bomb, and then, you know, don't get hit by an enemy there, which you then get out of your way by killing with your bomb. So then you hold down and then left to make sure you land on the water. Sometimes you'll be in this glitch state where you have a bomb over your head. There is a setup that will ensure this doesn't happen, although it is a lot more pixel perfect than the method I just showed you here. And also, 
Although this state will softlock you if you're in Chicken Hut, it doesn't softlock you here because there's many ways to disable this state which are easily triggerable on Dark World Lake Hylia. One of them is to take damage, another way is just hop into a water and get ejected. Of course, you can't do either of those things inside of the Chicken Hut and you can't leave, you can't exit doors while you're carrying something over your head. And that's why it softlocks your game. But in this case, we don't really care, right? So we're here now. What are the applications of this? Why would I ever wanna do this? Well, if I was in inverted mode, this could be a way to sequence break to uh, Ice Palace. Because although you can fake flipper via screen transition over here, um, you can't get there in inverted mode without either the flute having been activated or the flippers already. So unless you've got the flute or the flippers, there's no easy way to get here other than to bomb jump. Uh, but you could bomb jump over here as well. Like, there's no reason, but you you could totally do it if you didn't suck like me. There we go. So now I'm over here. Uh, unfortunately, you can't, like, bomb jump to the next bit of shallow water and the next one. And believe me, I have tried many different setups because there's no land. And that seems to be really key for this bomb jump. Like, if I were to try to bomb jump across this gap here... Um, it wouldn't work because uh, you can see I do skip across the shallow water as I expected, but then it just puts me into like a falling in the water state and uh, then I'm returned back to where I was. So unfortunately, as far as I know, you can't use this glitch to get to the Lake Hylia either. Otherwise, that would be super, super cool. Uh, what are the other applications for this glitch? Well, they're pretty dang fringe, right? Like other than getting to Ice Palace in inverted mode when you really, really should be going to Ice Palace, um, there's not much, but there is one more even more ridiculous tech that I'm very proud of because I found this setup um, Although it is very kern like and that it's like never gonna be useful uh, Is you can actually Bomb skip yourself into the screen transition here And it's but it's not easy like if I were just try to do this naively like I pick up a bomb and then I kind of do that oops there we go. It's not gonna work, right? Like I'm not gonna be able to get close enough. You can see that my um, my X coordinate is DB8. So that's not close enough to the screen transition after I bomb myself to get in. If I try to do it from higher, now I'm at DC0, I'm gonna hit my head against the wall and I'm not gonna be able to go. So basically what I need is I need the, um, the X of something higher like this, but the, uh, the Y of something that doesn't have quite as much of an X like this. There is a way to get that though. Um, so what you do is you need to approach this tile from the top and that allows you to be further right than you'd ordinarily be able to be. So you can see I'm at DBF here. If I just came from here naively, it would put me at DB8. So DBF is much farther than, than uh, DB8. So what I want is I need, I think it's actually pixel perfect. You need the rightmost pixel that you can possibly be on. So now I'm on DBE and before I was on DC0, so we know that that means DBF is the correct pixel. Um, so I am cheating a little bit here because I have the coordinates on, but this is possible without the coordinates on, although I do recommend, if you're gonna learn this, to practice it with coordinates. So let's turn the coordinates off. So, okay, here I am, right? I'm just naively setting this up. So I'm just gonna check, okay, is that far enough over? No, nope. okay, I'm gonna sword buffer to the left. Is that, nope, left. All right, I think that's a visual glitch that's putting the coordinates up there, but those aren't my actual coordinates anymore. So I think this is it. I think I've approached from the top on the rightmost pixel. Uh, now I just need to actually execute the bomb jump. So pick up the bomb. And there we go. So I bomb jumped into a fake flippers. Now this is the tough spot, right? Like I have to navigate this, this area. Uh, and I made it to the diving board. What are the utility of this glitch though? Like if it's entrance randomizer, this could allow me to sequence break to... Um, what is it, three entrances that are over here that I might not otherwise be able to get to, unless there was some connector that allowed me to get here. But the other potential application is that whirlpool that's right over here. So this whirlpool down here will bring you to the Dark World Witch's Hut area. Um, and that could be useful in very fringe scenarios. Like, let's say you wanted to get over to the west side of the Dark World, but you didn't have the hammer or the gloves or the flippers. But you did have the hook shot. Well, it still is possible to get to the west side of the Dark World by doing that crazy double bomb jump skip into the screen transition. So, but you know, would you ever want to do that? The answer is hell no, because you are skipping either the power gloves, the flippers, or the hammers. And two out of those three items are definitely required, and the other one is just plain nice to have, right? And maybe required if Swamp Palace is a crystal. 
So you're pretty much guaranteed skipping something that's in pod. However, if Swamp House was a pendant and you knew somehow that flippers were in Palace of Darkness, like let's say you got a hint or you've already seen where the gloves and the hammer is or something like that, uh, then you might decide, okay, you know what? I don't wanna go in Palace of Darkness. I'm just gonna sequence break over to the west side. Or if you got a hint about something really, really special on the west side of the dark world, like let's say the hammer is above the graveyard ledge or um, the boots are above the graveyard ledge, then you might decide, okay, I'm gonna sequence break over, grab that item, then go do pod for my other really nice progressive item. There is one more utility though for this bomb jump, which is maybe my favorite because it's actually useful. Um, and that is another uh, fake flipper via screen transition. So I flipped to four. This is just one more way to set up the screen transition uh, to the whirlpool that brings you to the witch hut area. So it's a little bit faster too. I drop the bomb, I'm walking down, do the bomb jump, boom. Like it's just one seamless motion, right? Like I don't need to spend time sword buffering, lining myself on the screen transition. I just get to do this all in one swift motion. So pretty cool. So I wanna talk a little bit about where the tech could go from here because some of this tech is fairly new and there's also uh, you know, new applications of old tech uh, that we thought was all explored out, but apparently it wasn't. Um, so where could we go from here? Well, one of the things that I'm curious about is, is it possible to water skip bomb jump from here to that little bit of land over there? Because as we've seen before, we could then bomb jump our way over to the east side of the dark world. And that would be a way that at least in the randomizer, you can always get to the east side of the dark world. It doesn't matter what items you have. You don't have to have a fairy in the bottle. You don't have the flippers. You don't have the hammer. You don't have the boots. You can always get to the east side of the dark world if you know this bomb jump. But we're a little bit limited. So if I just to try to, you know, just do this um, and I actually get it. Oop. The place that the, the bomb lands in the water is going to be like slightly above me. Um, and you can kind of see it now uh, just from where I'm jumping in the water and where the bomb lands. So it's gonna knock me in the incorrect direction is basically where I'm going with this. Yeah, so you can see it knocked me south, right? Um, so I could also like, okay, what if I tried to throw a bomb and then hop in? Well, the bomb gets, you know, it goes in the water. So another thing you could try is like, okay, throw a bomb so that it lands on the edge and then quickly run over there and then hop in. So let's try that. Okay, and then it just shoots me out to the right because it wasn't far, you know, low enough to shoot me at the correct angle. Okay, well, what if we use a very obscure glitch where um, as long as you're holding an item over your head, then your bomb won't sink in the water. And this actually works best with frozen enemies for some reason, uh, rather than bombs or Samaria blocks, which will delete the block as soon as you hop off a ledge. Frozen enemies don't do that, which is why I've frozen an enemy here. So let's just set him up to where we want to grab him. And then I'm going to throw this a little bit further into the water. Grab the enemy. There we go. Okay, still not the correct angle, right? Like I've used quite a lot of tools at my disposal to try to get this diagonal. And a lot of other people who are much more skilled in glitches than I am have also tried this. And we don't know a way yet, but it could be possible. We don't know. We don't know. There could be some other tech. Uh, well, what else could there be in the future? I imagine that we might see um, some new way to interrupt your pitfall. So back here in the Skull Woods area, um, the application of the uh, fairy revive over pitfall, um, that's something that I kind of found out independently uh, not too long ago, and, but apparently it was known to some other people in the glitch hunting community. Um, it's just that no one ever told me about it, so I had to find it on my own. Uh, but I wonder if there are other ways to interrupt your pitfall, right? Like it makes me think there's got to be other ways. Um, Samaria blocks, for instance, they act pretty weirdly when you uh, do a diagonal input into them. Like maybe that could count as an interrupted pitfall if you did it exactly on the right pixel, I don't know. Um, we don't, I think, fully understand why bonking helps your interrupted pitfall kind of state. Um, we don't fully understand it. We think it's because some kind of state is checked while you're dashing and then the bonk interrupts that check, and so it doesn't reset the pitfall state when it otherwise would. I'm not really sure. Maybe some people understand it, I just don't. But in any case, there could be something there too, like maybe there's a way to bomb jump across the gap that will arm it, or to be damaged by an enemy across. Um, we don't really know. Maybe you could do something like a Yuzuhara Bado Adventure kind of thing, where like, 
if you were to drink a potion uh, right as you were about to fall in a pit and then you walk away, then maybe that arms the, the water walk state. Let's go find out together, shall we? And moment of truth. No, yeah, and this is <laughs> this is glitch hunting with Kern. Like, people who are actually good glitch hunters, they'll have, like, they'll be checking the memory addresses of things that actually tell them whether or not they got into the state. I just come over here manually and, like, do it old school and see, okay, did I get it? No, I didn't get it, so, oh well, rip me. But, uh, yeah, that's that's some, some direction that I might see water traversal tech go in the future. Uh, it isn't currently possible to use any of these glitches to sequence break inside of Swamp Palace. Like, you could with mi major glitches in some situations, uh, mostly by swimming through the ground, but with just minor glitches, you really can't do anything. Even if you could, and you can, even if you could get a uh, fairy revival, you know, when this was flooded, it's interesting because you can't actually move anywhere. Like, your, your layer hasn't been changed, so it thinks you're still on the ground layer, and you'll just swim up against this wall, and all you can do is just hop back up the diving board back onto land. Like, you can't actually... Um, you know, go up this staircase because your layer is in the incorrect position. But if you could somehow change your layer uh, correctly while you're doing the fairy revival fake flippers, maybe? I don't know. So that's another place that maybe we'll see some tech in the future because if you could skip the flippers requirement in Swamp Palace, you just plain don't need the flippers anymore, right? Like it's, it's the rare situation in which you would ever actually need the flippers as an item as long as you need these sequence breaks. But there is one more bit of tech I want to show you, and I left it for last just to kind of give you a moment of zen, and I put it in future tech, question mark, because it kind of is uh, a little weird, um, and uh, let's just say it's, it's kind of convoluted. So what you need for this, this glitch is you need some way to freeze enemies, and you need the Quake Medallion. I know, right? Like, which glitch uses those items? This is part of why I love it so much. So I can't actually use these guys because they'll just die to the um to the ice rod if i had the ether i could use them but this guy luckily he will freeze if i can hit him all right good and he hit me down to the correct health value i needed to so let's do a fairy in a bottle all right now i pick him up and i kind of line up around here throw him now he's you can see he's like at the bottom of the cliff. He's not quite in the water yet, which is good. We don't want him to be in the water, but he's at the bottom of the cliff. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Quake Medallion and the Quake Medallion turns all enemies or most enemies into these little blob things, but it also does it for frozen enemies, which is just incredible. So not only can you freeze enemies, but you can basically unfreeze them and put them wherever you want them in the world, which is really useful for a fairy revival because ordinarily, you cannot fairy revive from the west side of Dark Lake Hylia. There's just no good enemy RNG. I've done it before using frame advance, but you have to get extraordinarily lucky and you have to be incredibly well-timed on it as well. However, this method is stupidly simple. I just put him exactly where I want him to be. He's trying to pathfind towards me, so he'll always be right below me. And then I just hop off, right? And now I'm gonna be uh, fairy revived and in fairy flippers. So why would you ever wanna do this? Well, you usually wouldn't because you would just rather use a bomb, right? Like why go through all this effort? There's a lot more item requirements in order to do this. So what's the point? Um, well, one of the points why you might do this is because you have the super bomb. So there are better sequence breaks, um, particularly if you're sequence breaking the aggro requirement for returning the super bomb because the hammer is in the pyramid fairy, which is a very rare case, but if it does happen, then you are logically required to defeat Aga. And the only way to sequence break it is to do some crazy shenanigans. Um, yeah, and there's better ways to sequence break that if you have the right items. But if you don't, and you do happen to have the Quake Medallion and the Ice Rod, well, there you go. There's your moment of Zen. A, a situation which will never ever come up in anyone's randomizer seat ever because it is so incredibly rare that the stars align to make this tech worth your while. But if it did come up, it would save you like four or five minutes over your opponent. But we're gonna get into that more in a future video, a future stupid tech video on the super bomb. So thanks for joining me. I hope this is helpful. Uh, let me know down in the comments if this clarified things for you, if you're able to sequence break the Zora ledge for the first time. I love to hear people's stories about how they've uh, used these glitches in actual runs and uh, their process of learning them. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Catch you around.